month. Um, uh, and another event that was doing this was a company in Canada uh, called Hardcore Road Trip, which was an, it's another sort of hardcore based fed. Um, I know some people who were having problems before the Extreme Rising stuff came up with Extreme Rising sort of defected to Hardcore Road Trip. Um, and uh, there was some, you know, they were having an event that same weekend and, and they were sort of doing stuff there. Well, uh, apparently there's controversy there as well as uh, I believe a good half or a little bit more than half of the roster didn't get paid Oof. Uh, because the promoter bailed uh, halfway through the show. Oof. Um, uh, uh, we found this out because the main event match, which was Masada against a, a wrestler. I, I apologize. I can't remember the name. But uh, they had basically this main event match, and then some of the roster came out and sort of revealed to the crowd what had happened. Oh, my God. Um, I, can I read this uh, account by Gregory Iron I'm finding in this article? Yes, Gregory Iron actually did, uh, was, I believe, was wrestling and, on and, that and event. Guys, so. Gregory Iron is one of the nicest guys in the business I've, 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 I've talked with. Um, mm-hmm. and, and we've had him on the, on the other show before and everything. Um, so uh, wrestler Gregory Iron. Uh, I was one of the guys that ha- had a promise. Last night, I landed on my neck and head during the match at Hardcore Road Trip, which I'd like to make clear was my fault. Okay, he admits that. Uh, despite the pain, I finished the match. By the end of the evening, it was discovered that promoter Mark Livingston faked a heart attack and left without paying any of the wrestlers. <laughs> he owes me yeah. money for that I literally almost broke my neck for on the show. Um, who knows a potential permanent damage? I mean, which I, I don't know. That's kind of like his- which one? And I actually believe I heard an update. Uh, actually, a company that I'm going to talk about that has an event coming up this weekend, uh, Smash Wrestling, which has no affiliation to Hardcore Road Trip whatsoever, actually paid for Gregory Iron. Oh wow, which is awesome on their part. Yeah, yeah, and even he says, uh, "Do not support Hardcore Road Trip. Do support Steven D'Angelis, who busted his ass booking a show." for another unprofessional extreme scumbag along with the wrestlers who risk their bodies for zero pay. That is messed up. I mean, yeah. we always hear stories. I mean, that's one thing I know we always hear these, you know, from, you know, people we know, or, you know, uh, you know, all these guys, you know, busting their ass for, for not even enough for gas. Right. But to, right. especially that this is up in, uh, and looking, if I know my Canada geography, I mean, it's not too far into Canada. Toronto looks like the first way. London is like kind of, uh, kind of between the lakes there. You know, it's not a bad drive from um, probably around Cleveland area. You're just going around the lake uh, for the most part. Uh, you know, maybe like five, six hours. But still, like that's, that's yeah. crappy. That is crappy. It's and, a terrible and, situation. It's, and this is a show that looks like it had Rhino on it. Mm-hmm. Uh Devon Dudley, who, by the way, is somebody coming from Florida, probably. Yeah. Um, amongst others, that's oh man, who else is on the show? Devon Juventud Guerrera, Colin mm-hmm. Delaney, the super awesome guy there. We're Christian York. Uh, and I'm not seeing anybody else. Necro Butcher's on this one. Uh, Zach Gowan was on this one. Uh, yeah, Masada. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's Jazz, Tracy Smothers. Man, there's a lot of people I would not want to piss off. On no, absolutely show. not. And, and it's a crappy situation. It's sort of a testament. Uh, like you mentioned before, there's a lot of bad in the wrestling, too. And, and there's a lot of promoters that um, sort of aren't the best. This... And, and a lot of promotions that sort of don't have that, you know, reputable attitude, I guess you could say. Yeah, um, and I don't know, was, is Hardcore Road Trip something that kind of popped up out of nowhere? Or it- um, I had just heard about them through the Extreme Rising controversy. I'm assuming they had been around for at least a couple shows. I mean, I'm um, seeing they have video on the front of their website. The opening match looks like it's Kid Cash and Nunzio, for instance. So um, and I believe, video does like, not look it, very good, by the way. But, like, um, I believe, I don't know if it was the actual promoter's uh social media accounts or the hardcore road trip accounts, but they were all taken down apparently. Um, yeah. So it's a real shitty situation. That sucks. That sucks. Yeah. And, and, and like you mentioned, it's terrible for the wrestlers, especially the ones yeah. that travel long distances. And, and, and I mean, coming from Canada I pay, and not only that, but like uh, not even paying the guys, but also in a sense, like a lot of the people, I guess didn't have like travel, set up for them to get back wow I, so, so there's a lot of people i mean it's a lot harder to get in and out of canada than it used to be for instance yeah um like, that's messed up that's really messed up 
yeah it's a, it's terrible and 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 hopefully and it's something like this you think well and i think we sort of mentioned it with um when we talked to pierre abernathy about how there's you know promoters out there or companies out there that sort of reflect the whole scene of independent wrestling and if you see one thing you expect it from the entire scene and and that's not the case but i i you know you know you have to sort of view this as an exception to how indie wrestling should be run certainly certainly this is kind of an aside but like i know that indie wrestling is run a certain way you Mm -hmm. know but like it always blew my mind you know first looking into you know indies and actually working with indies uh locally and everything just like why why are contracts not a thing yeah you know i i I don't know it just seems that was solved but i understand i i think a lot of these these companies work so on the fringe and not as an actual business in general they're right you know um anytime i i've you know tried to uh, apply certain dollars and cents like one thing i get told is um that doesn't work with indie wrestling when yeah. I try to apply I don't, a business I never, sensibility I to something. I never really like that excuse. No, no. Like the that or the, hey, indie wrestling doesn't work that way. It's like, okay, then it's not a business, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, versus, you know, and you know, some companies do try to do it the right way. You know, we, we both listened to the Mike Quackenbush thing where he talks about he has an accountant that goes over things and tells him, this is not a viable business, <laughs> yeah. but he does it because of the passion, you know, as long as, Hey, as long as you're not in a zero, right? Or, you know, not in the negative, I think you're doing okay. With yeah. This. And, and you can only hope. I, and, and, you know, I think sometimes, pro- and look, and in, in the sense of Indies getting a bad rep because of this, I think also promoters tend to get a bad rep Yeah, because yeah. You, you see so many scumbag promoters out there. 